Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am Prashant Mawani. I hope you all are doing good, my dear friends. Uh, today is uh, 7th March 2020. Day is uh, Saturday. And uh, I have a question for you. Name the five nations that are part of Indian Ocean Commission. Now, for today is Saturday, so we have four articles on our table. One is about uh, Yash Bank. This one is about cryptocurrency. Uh, this one is about uh, Delhi violence. And the last one is about COVID-19 and monetary policy. Now, before we jump on to these articles, I have a good news for you guys that at present, Big Holy Sale is going on on all our pendrive and tablet courses. You are getting flat 70% discount on all our pendrive and Android courses. All information pertaining to it is available on studyiq.com. If you have any question, queries, doubts regarding it, uh, you can give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen. Keep in mind that 11th March is the last date for this big holy sale. So don't wait for 11th March. Make the most out of it today itself. Uh, to download the PDF of today's lecture, you have two sources on your screen. Make sure that you share this lecture with other students. Hit the like button if you have learned something from today's discussion. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, dear friends, let's talk about Yes Bank. Two one by one, we got two important information from RBI. The first one was that uh, that for next 30 days, RBI is uh, going to keep this Yes Bank under moratorium. So basically what it means is RBI has uh, taken over this Yes Bank. Uh, the complete control, this remote control of Yes Bank is in the hands of RBI now. This was the first uh, important information pertaining to Yes Bank. Second information that we got yesterday is scheme of reconstruction. Of course, Yes Bank is under RBI's control because uh, as far as uh, financial stability or financial condition of Yes Bank is concerned, it is not in a good health. It is in red. So, RBI has announced a draft scheme of reconstruction that entails that SBI, the biggest lender of our country, State Bank of India, is investing capital to acquire 49% stake in the restructured private lender. So SBI is basically going to handle this financial crisis of Yes Bank. Uh, it is going to bail out this bank by investing crores and crores. It's going to acquire 49% stake of this uh, Yes Bank and uh, these experts from SBI will look after this Yes Bank. It, they will basically sort out uh, the issues that are going on. Now, Yes Bank's uh, troubles are not exactly new or unique. Uh, the continued inability, this is the main reason why we find Yes Bank in such a situation because the continued inability of uh, several corporates to repay their loans resulting in many lending up in insolvency proceedings has meant that lenders have been the hardest hit. What has happened here is big corporate accounts. They took huge amount of money from Yes Bank but they never paid those money. I'm not saying that all accounts or all borrowers have done this uh, thing but many of them uh, you know they took money but they never paid back to yes bank and yes bank's inability to collect this money is one of the main reason why yes bank is in this situation uh, on the other side what we are seeing is uh, that uh, our economy is not doing that great we are already going through a slowdown uh, various different reasons are behind it uh, we know trade war uh, played uh, this trade war between uh, USA and China is one reason. Uh, then drop in demand, internal demand or domestic demand. Uh, we saw a big drop. Third thing is this coronavirus. So all these things uh, are going on and all this because of various different reasons. Our economy is going through a slowdown phase. On the other side, what we are finding is this burden of bad loans, right? Uh, we got some good news a few months ago, but now then we find here and there, we find this sort of cases like Yes Bank and other banks. PNB was in news, then this Punjab and Maharashtra Cooperative Bank was in news for similar reasons. And now we have this uh, yes Bank, right? Uh, so it's bad for our economy. Uh, this could then be a good opportunity for the RBI to, rev uh, to revive its PCA guideposts. Now, the most surprising thing about this whole case is that normally what happens if, if, if a bank is not doing that great, right? Then RBI will keep that bank under PCA. PCA stands for Prompt Corrective Action. 
So it's like uh, when RBI will, uh, you know, realize that a bank is not doing that great. So some restrictions will be applied on that bank. For example, you cannot give money anymore, right? All you have to do is, first of all, you have to sort out your uh, current loans. Uh, you have to recover some money. You have to collect some money from your uh, borrowers. You know, you have to, uh, you cannot uh, lend money. And there are so many restrictions uh, under this PCA that is prompt corrective action. The name itself, right? Prompt means quick corrective actions. So, this Yes Bank was not kept under PCA, but directly it was kept under this moratorium. So, why it slipped away from this PCA? This is a big question and this is also an opportunity for RBI as well to revive its PCA guideposts. Uh, if there are any issues with it, uh, then it should be sorted as soon as it should be sh sorted out as soon as possible. Uh, th the choice of SBI as investor uh, now, there is one plus point from my point of view. As per this article, it is talking about this paucity of options. Like, government is not having that many options, uh, you know, without... It means a few days ago, uh, this cabinet decision uh, was out and uh, government has talked about this amalgamation of uh, public sector banks. Uh, so, hopefully, by 1st April, we are going to see uh, so many banks will be amalgamated and they will be made, you know... We have many banks, government banks, so we are the main plan is that we should have four, five strong big banks rather than having so many banks. So we are going to see some mergers uh, by first April. Now SBI is the biggest uh, right uh, it's it's gigantic in size. It's the biggest lender or the biggest bank of our country. Uh, so naturally SBI is uh, going to be the first choice. Uh, so this is one of the main reason um, and you can also see it from this point of view that we don't have that many options when I say we I'm talking about government. The other thing that I see is that uh, SBI the positive side is SBI is experienced as well uh, because it is big it is having that many you know it has uh, those uh, you can say good points of expertise or expert people are there with SBI so they can help uh, in solving this yes bank issue. And uh, it is important and it is a good sign as well that uh, RBI took a quick action. So this will provide a huge sigh of relief for uh, those investors, those customers who have deposited their money in this uh, Yes Bank. Now, a few add-ons and these add-ons are very important, uh, right? It is basically a research finding from a paper that was the title is Bank Quality, Judicial Efficiency and Loan Repayments uh, Delays uh, in Italy. So... This research paper says that there is a direct link between bank's health and its borrowers' repayment discipline. I'll give you one example. Just imagine you have uh, a person called Mr. X. Now, this Mr. X will borrow money from, uh, let's say, Y1, Y2, and Y3. These are the three banks, right? So, he will borrow money from this Mr. X will borrow money from all these three banks. Now, just imagine that this Y1 is a very weak bank. But these two banks are doing, they are very healthy. When I say healthy, I'm just saying that they are, they are, you know, the way they are operating, their money, you know, their people, everything is quite strong. They have a very robust system. But Y1 is weak. So, normally, uh, or, or in most cases, what is... Uh, observed is that uh, you know this uh, this Mr. X will not pay to Y1 because it is it is a very weak bank. So borrowers repayment discipline is is dependent on a bank's health and the carefully crafted study finds that borrowers significant delay payments to banks that have a weak balance sheets. So this is a very interesting finding as well. Uh, Philip Bond and Ashok Rai in their 2009 uh, journal as well have said and talked about this borrower run. Borrower run is, uh, is a situation where a borrower delays repayment in anticipating of default by other d borrowers of the bank and the eventual collapse uh, will be that bank will fall down. So if I have borrowed money from Yes Bank and I know that uh, five of you have also borrowed money. So I will wait for one of you uh, to go for a default. Uh, then someone else will go. Then I will go. You know, so basically uh, borrowers will, will delay their repayment in anticipation of default.
and eventually what will happen is that bank will fall down so they don't have to pay any money and they will you know they will buy more time by doing this so this is what borrower run is all about so the whole assumption here and this borrower run is to make a bank weak you know when you when you are borrowing money from a weak bank uh, already the bank is going through so many problems so for for a time being they will chase you but then bank will be busy and some other stuff so you can go scot free so that's what borrower run is all about so this takeover of sbi is is going to send a very strong message to all those people all those borrowers who are who are thinking of creating a borrower run um, you know they should keep this thing in mind that sbi is a very strong bank and it will take some harsh as well as tough decisions so that's a good thing for our banking system now making the environment conducive for justice this article is by retired supreme court judge madan p lokur he visited few areas uh, that were affected by this uh, recent uh, riots in delhi and he describes them as uh, it, he says that it resembles like a battlefield can you believe that it looks very uh, horrid and it's terrible but property can eventually be restored is asking right question that can life be restored and the answer is of course no riots uh, they create fissures in society they create uh, uh, you know they 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 create this uh, this cracks in society and it becomes nearly impossible i'm not saying it's it's impossible but it becomes very hard uh, to cement this cracks and whatever little assistance as per justice uh, lokur uh, was given to these people or these victims was by ngos and by individuals rather than of a country or when i say country i'm talking about the government or he is basically talking about the government that uh, delhi government or central government provided very little uh, assistance it was it was this this uh, uh, samaritans and this ngos uh, they were helping people they were providing medicines and food and clothes and other things now it's very sad that we have lost uh, somewhere around 51 or some uh, you know people in this uh, in this riot uh, and i'm not just talking about citizens uh, of course we have lost uh, some security personnel as well and this is sad for every one of us it is definitely very difficult for all those uh, all those families who have lost their family members of course and uh, god bless them but uh, it's very difficult for uh, for us as well because it's not just about uh, caa it's not just about uh, who is right and wrong it's about our country as well it is sending this whole incident is uh, sending a very wrong signal about our country right uh, there are so many uh, parliaments uh, around the world there are so many politicians around the world they are uh, uh, talking about our our, our situation um, they are talking about uh, the conditions of uh, muslims in our country and Uh, what they are uh, talking about is not uh, i would say uh, 100% right uh, because um, you know all over um, across our country we are a very secular it's it's not just about our country our our people are very secular right the people of our india are uh, very secular people and uh, this is the main reason why uh, why our country is or what we are at now right generally if you see the positive thing is that uh, we don't find that many riots and things I means of course i'm not saying that there are no riots at all yes we have we are talking about a riot isn't it uh, this delhi riots but overall if you see things are not that bad right uh, people are living with each other this diversity that we have is unbelievable but then as well things are going very smoothly generally speaking so it's a good thing about our country it's good thing about the people of our country but at present what we are finding is this blame game is going on right uh, political parties politicians right they are blaming each other no one is right here i would say 100% no one is right right uh, we all are uh, you know responsible for it directly indirectly and uh, if we are responsible if we take responsibility then only we can solve it if i if i say the problems that are going on in my life are, is because of you then the whole means i'm giving the remote control in your hand so i cannot solve it anymore it will depend on you but if i take responsibility that yes i am in charge of this is my country and my people and i'm in charge of solving this then as a society we can 
find a way out but for that we need to have a very very positive attitude now one conclusion uh, that we can get from this thing is that uh, if someone in the executive had an idea of good governance and if the establishment had taken prompt action many lives could have been saved and damage to property could have been avoided as well uh, Justice uh, Lokur says that uh, it seems that establishment consisting of police and executives suffered from a mild attack of kumkaranitis. That means they were uh, like sleeping like this character of Ramayan, like sleeping or having a very deep slumber that they were not uh, uh, aware about uh, what was going on. And uh, uh, Justice Lokur uh, describes himself as a lifelong student of law and he says that he was appalled at uh, the virtual absence of any coherent response from judicial system. It's very sad that uh, Delhi High Court acted immediately but after that Delhi High Court said that uh, this is not the right time to lodge FIRs. We can handle the things uh, that we have uh, at our hand. Like This was the suggestion that was coming from government. So Delhi High Court agreed with uh, the government that... Uh, we can register FIRs later on. First of all, we need to control uh, this riot-like situation. Now, FIR is very basic, right? First information report is very basic, and uh, this is uh, basically the inception point of investigation. And if you delay registration of an FIR, so basically you are delaying investigation, and after that, uh, facts, you know, they will get distorted, and we have seen this thing in the past as well. So this is something that is not right at all. And the role of judiciary in riot situations is extremely important. Whatever judiciary says or does has tremendous influence. And, uh, you know, now the time has come that judiciary becomes more reactive rather than... Uh, beg your pardon, judiciary has been reactive. What we need is judiciary should play a very proactive role, particularly when it comes to this sort of uh, situation. Uh, now, in recent events, uh, have clearly suggested that uh, police all over the all over has completely mixed up and mangled freedom of speech and hate speech. We were talking about this uh, CCTV cameras, and you know, yesterday we were talking about how police, uh, some police personnel wearing uniform, they have destroyed uh, this uh, uh, CCTV cameras and other things, and this is uh, not acceptable at all. So, he is also asking few more questions uh, that. Uh, it took, uh, what, 35 years uh, for us to find uh, Sajjan Kumar guilty of offences in 1984's riot. So it's going to take uh, how many years uh, for us to, to, you know, to punish, to book, investigate, to book and to punish uh, these people who are part of this uh, recent violence in Delhi. Moving on to double-edged sword. This one is about cryptocurrency. Right uh, now, uh, Supreme Court took a very important decision on cryptocurrency, and uh, there are so many things uh, that we have to do as far as cryptocurrencies are concerned. Now, the Supreme Court has uh, struck down uh, this uh, this uh, circular uh, that was uh, issued by Reserve Bank of India back in 2018. And the main reason what uh, what Supreme Court said in its uh, statement, if you are following daily financial news releases, you would be aware about this thing that we have talked about this. But again, if you are uh, not watching it, then let me tell you. Supreme Court has said that RBI has all the powers to take decisions uh, about this sort of matters. But this circular is not explaining exactly what is the problem uh, with cryptocurrency. You know, and this is the main reason why RBI, um, why Supreme Court has uh, struck down this circular. That those people who are in this business of uh, cryptocurrency, they uh, they basically claimed this uh, thing that uh, we have this Article 191G of our Constitution that uh, uh, gives you this right, uh, entrepreneurial right to operate a business. So you have all the right to do business in our country as far as that business is legal you cannot claim that or you cannot say argue that you want to sell drugs and heroin and cocaine right this is something that is not acceptable this is illegal as well and it's not a legit business but if you want to open a provisional store or let's say if you want to open a factory or something right and if it is a, leg a legit business then yes you have all the right to do it so uh, this cryptocurrency 
businesses, right, or, or the promoters or this, 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 this firms, they said that it's quite strange and it looks strange as well that cryptocurrency is not illegal, but you cannot deal with it or you cannot do business. So using cryptocurrency. So this is, this is contradictory. Like you can say that you cannot, means water is not uh, illegal, but you cannot drink it. It's like that. So this is, this is the main reason why Supreme Court has uh, rejected this circular. So after all, despite ministerial committee recommendations, uh, warnings by institutions such as uh, the RBI about the problematic nature of their payment and exchange methods, the use of virtual currency or cryptocurrency over the internet continues to remain legal in our country. Right? And uh, the immediate effect of this RBI circular was to chalk the agencies because uh, RBI said to the banks that you cannot uh, support or you cannot trade with cryptocurrencies or cannot support uh, these businesses that are dealing with cryptocurrency. So that was the main plan. But now the Supreme Court has uh, rejected it. And after a decade or so of uh, deployment and use, the pros and cons of cryptocurrencies are now well known we know it very well right Cri cryptocurrency is not a new thing and it has been in news in the past as well so we know the pros we know the cons so we know the positives and negatives of cryptocurrency and uh, you know cryptocurrency are quite robust they are a bit positive when it comes to remittance if you want to transfer money from one place to another then they are very quick uh, but uh, there are some negative things as well like uh, you don't because it uses this blockchain algorithm so it's difficult to trace uh, you know secrecy is there and it can challenge your uh, your uh, uh, the currency of your country right uh, so that is a negative point then uh, it can be used for money laundering for supporting terrorism you know these are the negative things uh, that can happen but there are ways as well uh, to solve it and uh, the supreme court's decision does not mean a stamp of approval right uh, supreme court as i this is the main reason why i explained to you that uh, supreme court said and asked this question that cryptocurrency is legal but dealing with it was not allowed so this is something that is not acceptable so now it is on the government on rbi right the government should uh, empower rbi so that rbi can regulate this cryptocurrency when it comes to making payments or you know uh, for for any other purpose if you want to use cryptocurrency and if means because it is legal as well as uh, you know supreme court has removed this ban so now government and rbi and stakeholders should work together and they should come out with rules and regulations so that we can make it a bit more uh, secure right and uh, uh, they are not safe. Uh, don't invest. I'm not saying that don't invest, but I would say that if you are having extra money, if you are financially secure and if your stomach for extra risk is there, then only you should uh, invest in this uh, sort of currencies because it has seen its ups and downs, uh, this cryptocurrency. So be very careful if you are investing or thinking to invest in it. It's, it's legal. It has always been legal, uh, right? But... Uh, ups and downs are quite uh, quite extreme and uh, cryptocurrency can also be used uh, to challenge this uh, american tool america has always used uh, this dollar um, you know a, a, as a as a weapon as a tool um, uh, when it comes to sanctions or when it comes to uh, creating disruption so this sort of cryptocurrency uh, can can work as a defense system against this uh, american ability to weaponize the dollar but for that, we need a global teamwork. Moving on to next item, monetary policy can't combat uh, the COVID-19 impact. And now Federal Reserve, that is the apex bank of, uh, of USA, uh, it has uh, chopped 50 bips or basis points uh, of uh, repo rate. And this is to support uh, economy. Uh, during this tough time of uh, coronavirus because of coronavirus we know that uh, there has been a disruption in uh, uh, supply chain and uh, you know things are not going that uh, that well as far as global economy is concerned we can see I means the world bank and uh, oecd they have also said that uh, it's going to impact um, global economy global growth uh, this coronavirus and it's uh, it's effect is going to create disruption in global economy so to support America as well as global economy uh, federal bank has uh, decided to 
कट डाउन इंटरेस्ट रेट ना यूनाइटेड नेशंस कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑन ट्रेड एंड डेवलपमेंट से इस और एस्टिमेट्स दैट इट्स गोइंग टू क्रिएट 50 बिलियन डॉलर लॉस इन ग्लोबल इंपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट और ग्लोबल एक्सपोर्ट एंड इफ यू कंपेयर इट विद 2018 एटीन्स टोटल एक्सपोर्ट मर्चेंडाइज इट वॉज नाइनटीन पॉइंट दिस इज ग्लोबल वर्ल्ड मर्चेंडाइज एक्सपोर्ट वॉज 19.48 trillion dollars so it's a very small 50 billion is a small tiny amount but this is just at the starting or the beginning right it can get bigger so it's better to prepare ourselves as well as uh, when i say ourselves i mean to say individual countries as well as uh, global platforms they have to prepare themselves uh, monetary policy cannot fight virus but if we can at least mitigate uh, the damage that will be created by this uh, virus and that's everything in today's uh, discussion dear friends uh, you can see some news items on your screen you can see a lady as well uh, so can you give me the name of this uh, lady as well as uh, with which uh, uh, profession she is associated with uh, with uh, you know stick your answer in the comment section you have some news items police uh, should also go after leaders uh, spewing hate Uh, n- number of covid-19 cases mounts to 31 state has failed to do its job has been said by supreme court india joins uh, indian ocean commission as uh, observer uh, ed that is enforcement directorate uh, questions uh, rana kapoor associated with yes bank pulwama attack case and ia arrests uh, two more and 27 dead in uh, kabul attack uh, isis claims responsibility That's everything in today's discussion dear friends uh, and I will see you uh, with daily financial news analysis today as far as Hindu analysis are concerned I will see you early morning on Monday now Sunday is a day off uh, for this analysis and uh, I was not doing that well yesterday uh, means now I'm okay so I'm a bit uh, late today as well but uh, bear with me hopefully by Monday things will be all right by monday before 9 i will bring out this english version for you guys hindi will be before 8 am and uh, that's everything so thank you very much for your love and support god bless you all jai hind